This video is about two kinds of musical intervals, thirds and sixths, and how to use them in your guitar solos. First of all, what is an interval? Well, an interval is a measurement of the difference in pitch between two notes. There are two kinds of thirds. The major third is a difference of four semitones, and the minor third is a difference of three semitones. If you play the first and third notes of a major scale together, that is a major third. For example, in the C major scale, the first note is a C, and the third note is E. Play a C and an E together, and there you have it, a major third. If you play the first and third notes of a natural minor scale together, that is a minor third. In C natural minor, the first note is C, and the third note is E flat. Play these notes together, and that's a minor third. Thirds can be found all over the fingerboard. On most of the strings, you can play a third by holding down a note, and then also holding down one or two frets lower on the next string up. If you play one fret lower, that's a major third. Two frets lower is a minor third. That works on the sixth and fifth strings, the fifth and fourth strings, the fourth and third strings, and the second and first strings. It doesn't work on the third and second strings because of the way the guitar is tuned. The gap in pitch between the third and second strings is, is one semitone less than the gap between the other strings. So if we hold down a note on the third string, the same fret on the second string gives us a major third and one fret below on the second string gives us a minor third. A scale can be played entirely in thirds. Instead of playing a single note from the scale at a time, you play a note plus the note two steps up together. Some of these thirds will be major and some minor. Let's look at an example with the C major scale. First, here it is in single notes. And now, here it is in thirds. Let's do that again, and this time note which steps are major and which are minor. Major minor, minor, major, major, minor, minor, major. So these intervals can be used in soloing. What you need to be aware of is which chord you are playing over. For example, you might be playing over the chords C, F and G. Now, the thirds that work best over a chord are the first, second, and third steps of the scale that the chord is derived from. So over the C chord, we use the first three steps of the C major scale, played as thirds. Over the F chord, instead of using the C major scale, we use the F major scale in thirds and use the same steps, the first, second and third. This breaks the no sharps or flats rule of the key of C um, because the second step in F includes the note B flat. However, in this situation, the third containing a B flat simply sounds better over the F chord than using a B natural. Just imagine that your piece has temporarily changed key to the key of F. Similarly, with the G chord, use the same steps from the G major scale in thirds. 
In other words, the same as F, just two frets higher. Here's a simple four bar exercise to get you familiar with using thirds. The first bar is played over a C chord. The second bar is played over F. The third bar is the same as the first bar. And the fourth bar is played over a G chord. So over the C chord, I'm going to use these intervals. Now these are played on the third and second strings. The first one is both strings held down at the fifth fret. The second interval is uh, once again it's the third and second strings but this time we're using the seventh fret for the third string and the sixth fret for the second string. And uh, the third interval I'm going to use over the C chord is uh, exactly the same as the one we just played, just two frets higher. So here we are. Over the F chord in the second bar, I'm going to play the equivalent intervals um, based on the F major scale. Um, now these are on the top two strings. So the first one uh, is um, on the second string, I'm playing the sixth fret. And on the first string, I'm playing the fifth fret. Next, um, we play the 8th fret and 6th fret and then go up 2 frets for the 3rd interval. For the 4th bar in G, we just play exactly the same as we played in F, just 2 frets higher. So here we go. Let's take another look at the major thirds that we get by playing a C and an E together. What if we took the lower note, the C, and raised it by an octave? In effect, we turn the third upside down. The resulting interval is a sixth. An upside down major third is a minor sixth. And an upside down minor third is a major sixth. All of the thirds we have been looking at up to now can be treated in this way. You may recognise... You may recognise this style of lead guitar from 60s soul and R&B music, especially made by the Stax label in Memphis, where Steve Cropper was in-house producer, songwriter and guitarist. The next exercise is in the key of A and will help you get familiar with using sixth intervals. The first bar is played over an A chord. The second bar is played over E. The third bar uses the relative minor chord, F sharp minor. And the fourth bar is played over a D chord. So over, over the A chord, I'm using the first and third strings at the fifth and sixth fret and then I'm using um, the same strings at the 7th fret and at the 9th fret. For the 2nd bar, the E chord, I'm playing the exact same frets but this time on the 2nd and 4th strings. For the F sharp minor chord, I'm using the second and third intervals that I played over the E chord and then adding another one which is the um, second string at the 10th fret and the fourth string at the 11th fret and then over the, the fourth chord, the D chord, I'm playing the same pattern um, on the uh, second and fourth strings. Uh, so the first interval is at the third and fourth frets, the second is at the fifth fret, and the third is at the seventh fret.
Finally, I'm going to improvise over G, C and D chords and I'll be sure to include some thirds and sixths. So I hope that's going to be useful to you. Thanks for watching.